again, Gary Stearman. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. This one being made on the 25th of May for broadcast on May the 29th, a Tuesday. Bob Ulrich with me in studio. We're going to continue the uh, uh, discussion that we had concerning heavenly sounds, and, and that one ran over the weekend. But before we do that, uh, Bob, I'd like to just take a few moments to talk about uh, the passing of a great prophecy teacher, uh, Grant Jeffrey. Uh, it's a sad day in a lot of ways for, for many of us. Uh, Grant uh, suffered a seizure, I guess it's probably been a couple, two, three weeks ago now, and uh, passed away about a week later. Uh, I talked to his wife Kay about it and it was unexpected. He was only 63 years old mm -hmm. and he had a seizure. They rushed him to the hospital and they just simply couldn't control his body, I mean, he, they put him into some type of chemical coma, I gathered, just to try to stabilize him, and they were able to stabilize him and couldn't find the source of the, pro of the problem and mm. what was causing him to go into these terrible seizures. But he passed away about a week later, I guess, of cardiac arrest. It's been reported on the Internet. But uh, great, uh, great prophecy teacher, oh, yeah. great friend, great mentor, a guy who just had a, a tremendous personal influence on my life. In fact, sure. the first prophecy book I ever remember reading was a book Grant wrote called Armageddon, Appointment with Destiny. You, you took the words <clears throat> right out of my mouth. That's the one that brought uh, Grant to national attention. And to this day, that's still a great book to go back and read. Uh, because what he does is lay out anniversary dates in that book of, of famous events showing that there is a pattern. Uh, to the way things happen in Israel. And, and I think he was the first uh, writer to, to really see that. It was an incredible book. I mean, in fact, yeah. I have one of the original hardback versions of the book, which really? you, know, you can't find anymore today. But when I got that book and understood for the first time that the feast days of Israel, that major events occurring in the life of national Israel, going all the way back through oh, history, yeah. are still being fulfilled today on these feast days, if people wonder why Gary and I, our ears perk up when Pentecost comes or when Rosh Hashanah comes or when even the ninth of Av comes and all these historic dates that yeah. Grant detailed in his book, it's because it's kind of like a, a, an appointment with destiny. Let's That's call it that. That's the way he put it, and it was, it was a bestseller. And, uh, and, of course, I'm sure most of you have seen Grant on uh, television, but, but he was excited about Bible prophecy. We mourn his passing. It was uh, uh, the Lord's uh, decision to take him at this time, I'm sure. Uh, he had done his work, and uh, he's in a lot better place now. Well, he was a prolific writer. I think he wrote, if I'm not mistaken, 27 books. That, uh, millions and millions of copies of his books circulated. Yeah. And you know what Hal Lindsey was in the 1970s or 80s, the voice of Bible prophecy? Grant Jeffrey kind of picked up that ball, yeah. and he became a prolific writer who... I think what he wrote about were subjects on the minds of the people, subjects in the news and things that people were really very curious about. And you're going to show us the June magazine because this is something on the minds of people, isn't it? Well, again, we want to continue the discussion we started over the weekend, and, and this is the uh, June 2012 issue of Prophecy in the News. On the front, you can see angels with trumpets blowing over the globe, the planet Earth down below. And the title sounds out of heaven and sounds have been heard in the heavens bob and this prompted me to write an article i put it off for a while because i wanted to make sure the phenomenon was genuine and it, and it is there are a lot of hoaxers out there producing their own heavenly sounds videos as always <laughs> happens but there are some legitimate bona fide documented uh sounds recorded and interviews with the people who recorded them well, there are definitely things afoot. I mean, some disturbing yeah. things afoot. And it's, it started off as trumpet sounds. It's gone into almost wailing moans. There are reports of people hearing sounds of locomotives crashing headlong into each other. Yet nothing is recorded on seismographs. People yeah. go outside their homes and there's nothing there. And, and yet the sounds are enormously powerful. Uh, just literally earth shaking except they don't shake the earth and people report these things uh, and call the police they call the, the fire department people go out and look and they find absolutely nothing 
So you have trumpets, you have explosions, you have metallic sounds like bang, banging and clanging. And there's another one that we hadn't mentioned, Bob, and that is many people have described the sound of voices in conversation at a distance. People talking to each other, but you can't quite make out what they're saying. There's somebody out there. Somebody out there. Yeah. And they listen, and they're very, very frightened. And all of these uh, the things, the, the composite image, if you will, leads you to one conclusion. There's something going on in the heavens. Well, we had a supermoon not all that long ago. <laughs> in fact, boy, you walk outside and you look up at that full moon, and that was a little terrifying to look at it. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, the Bible predicts signs of the heavens in the end times. It's also interesting, if you ever do a study, and we'll have to talk about this more one day, about comets and how these different signs in the heavens portend war and events that happen a period of time after that. So are we on the verge of seeing something pretty spectacular maybe come out of the Middle East? We know one thing. There is going to be war in the Middle East. We know another thing. According to the book of Revelation, there's going to be war in heaven. Two factions or maybe multiple factions, I don't know, but fighting going on in the heavens, which leads me to believe that we may be hearing, shall we say, the preliminaries of, of the big battle to come. Back in A.D. 70, when the temple was destroyed, uh, Josephus wrote these words. He said, Moreover, at that feast, which we call Pentecost, at the priest, as the priests were going by night into the inner court of the temple, as their custom was, to perform their sacred ministrations, they said that in the first place they felt a quaking. Then they heard a great noise, and after that they heard the sound as of a great multitude saying, let's remove from this place. So, uh, reading Josephus, we, hear, we have a composite of all of these different heavenly phenomena at the destruction of the temple in A.D. 70. Gary, that was just one of many, many, many things that happened, you know, before the temple was destroyed. One of the ones that I find utterly fascinating, the gates of the temple were made of not Corinthian leather, but fine <laughs> Corinthian bronze. Yeah, that's brass. right. And these gates were extremely heavy. I don't know what they weighed, but I know one of the gates was 60 feet long and 23 feet high. The, yeah. It and took 20 men. They said it took 20 men, even though the gates were on finely machined hinges. In other words, they, they were movable, but it took 20 men to move them. And yet for a period of time, they said these gates just swung in the wind like, like a leaf in the wind, like it was nothing without yeah. anybody's help to open or close them. They would close the gates, and the gates would open by themselves. It's very spooky. What, what happened in the temple courtyard? A red heifer. Gave birth, gave birth to, to a, lamb. a lamb. And, of course, Josephus records all of these things. By the way, we have a, uh, a reproduction copy of the complete works of Flavius Josephus right here, which we're offering uh, in uh, our magazine. And uh, we're offering it to you right now. And uh, if you want to know how to get it, it'll be right there on your website, so you can order it. You've got, to, you've got to share the last Josephus tidbit about the heavens being opened and the armies. Because, well, why don't you do because that? Because to me, it's just, it's, even Josephus says in his writings that even he wouldn't believe it. You know, I mean, it's so bizarre and surreal. But Josephus says that before the temple was destroyed, the heavens were opened. That veil was pulled back, and you could actually see the armies of heaven. Horses, chariots, swords... I mean, fighting, angelic warfare going on in the heavenlies that continued for a period of time. Absolutely. So that, that period of time in history, right before the destruction of the temple, before the scattering of the Jews to the four corners of the earth, was a monumental period in world history. And I just wonder if we're getting ready to enter another period just like that. A lot of people think so. Uh, there is good reason to believe the stage has been set in the Middle East. There's also good reason to believe that the intersection between heaven and earth is getting closer and closer and closer, and the day will soon come when it, the Lord will come into the clouds of heaven and we'll hear his voice uh, like a trumpet saying, come up hither, and we'll all be lifted up, and that'll be a great day. <clears throat> wow. And I, maybe we're being, <laughs> seeing the dress rehearsals right now. Well, I, I'd like to think you're right. I think more than ever, Christians are very, very eager and anxious to go home and spend eternity with the Lord. Order 
prophecy in the news. If you don't already subscribe, uh, yours for thirty four ninety five for a year subscription. And uh, believe me, we like to think of ourselves as being on the cutting edge of Bible prophecy, bringing you stories that you're not going to read anywhere else. Well, we've reached the end of the program again. Thanks for being here, Bob. Appreciate it. And to the rest of you, keep reading Scripture, keep watching, and most of all, keep looking up. Bye.